as you mentioned, it's wonderful to be open and to always learn. And how about your writing activity? You, you wrote some wonderful books. Do you have plans for a new book? Do you write night right now? So I think my my writing activities have changed and shifted focus through, through throughout the years. When I first moved to Thailand, I wrote uh, a journal about my life in Thailand and that was published as a book in Romania, in Romanian. And then I started writing in English for a local newspaper in, for a local magazine in, in Bangkok. And I focused, since our topic is, uh, is wellness and martial arts and sports, I focus my writing activity in Thailand on like very obscure topics such as sumo or uh, lacrosse. You know lacrosse being from Canada, right? Yes, but yes. In, in Thailand, you can actually practice lacrosse. Uh, you can actually practice sumo, which is crazy. Like when you, th when you say sumo, you think, of, you think of Japan only, right? Yeah. So I found the sumo place and I went and I, uh, um, I didn't train with them. I just observed and I wrote about them. So that was like almost for five years, I wrote about things that are not so well known in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And that was a great experience and it, it opened my eyes a lot. And actually that's how I discovered uh, Japanese archery. That's I how I discovered that. Kyudo. And that's how I became friends with, with, um, with, the, with the archers from the Kyudo club. So just a small parenthesis, I think when you reach out to, to people and you wanna write about them and you wanna learn about their activities, you create very good connections and you know these these can become friendships or you can learn new things or be exposed to new things so i did that a lot in thailand i always challenge myself let me find the next weird thing to write about I see. and then i wrote i at a point i said i want to write some fiction so i wrote a novel um it's um, a historical novel about Japan and Thailand, about a samurai coming to Japan, which is a historical fact, but then what happens in these days with some of his artifacts that he left behind. And since I moved to, to Thailand, most of my focus now is on studying and teaching and understanding psychology. So most of my reading and writing is on psychology there is no real plan for um, any publication in the future. Yes, and you mentioned psychology, you're a psychology teacher, professor, and uh, how you join in your, um, in your acceptance, how do you join all these activities together and how do you draw conclusions from all these things that you do and experience that you've been through? You know, I'm, I think I was actually thinking these past few, few weeks, I think I'm always on a journey of both discovering new things, but also a journey of self-discovery. So these days I've become more selective into how I spend my time, both in reading, in writing, in, in doing activities that I really enjoy and I'm passionate about. So I think, in a way, my refocus on psychology made me more aware of my inner thoughts and the things that I truly want to do in my life. So for example, I realized during this crazy time in the quarantine that there is a huge focus, there should be a huge focus and there's a necessity of, of, of changing people's mindsets. Everyone is so negative. So I did some studies and some writings in, uh, in positive psychology, but then it's such a big area that I want to narrow it down to, to a more specific um, area of study. So these days I'm interested in mindfulness and how we forget to be in the present how we always worry about what's gonna happen tomorrow and what I have to do in the future, or we always worry about what happened in the past. 
and we forget to focus on the present, on the here, on the now. <laughs> wonderful, yes, wonderful concept. And uh, the mindful and so basically you turn to knowing yourself, to this idea. Yeah. You think I this think can I help people now in difficult times, let's say. You know, it, as I said, I like to I like to teach by example. And I think I know myself pretty well at 42 years old, but I want to understand myself even better and to, to know fully well who I am and what my capabilities are. And I think that if one understands himself or herself truly well, you can project that image of confidence, of, of strength, of power, of, of kindness to the world. And that is an example for others to follow if they can, or you can just become a good influence on other people. That's but at the, same, at the same time, I wanna make this note that I'm not trying to teach or to impose anything on anyone, you know? Usually through my, through my videos, through my vlogs, through my writing, it's always a process of self-discovery and sharing what my journey is. And if other people find these concepts, these ideas interesting, then maybe we can engage in a conversation and you find people who are on the same, you know, train of thought with you. That's, that's wonderfully said. And uh, do you have a message for uh, the people, for the expats, for the people they living abroad after all these years? I've, I've been abroad now for almost 19 years. And at first I had a, quite a tough time adjusting in Thailand. There was a problem of the weather was just so different. There was a problem of the food. There was a problem of the language. So I think after two, three years, I managed to learn the language the Thai language and I started understanding people better. So if there's any message that I can share with people who think of moving abroad or living abroad or even traveling abroad is to try to understand the culture and the, the country you're visiting it through the eyes of its own people. So Thank once you. I learned the Thai language, I, under, I understood the nuances of, of how people interact, of the things you can say and cannot say and what actually means. Let's say you say something and it means something else. Mm -hmm. So I think understanding the people you go, the, understanding the people of, of another country where you wanna go to is not easy, but it can be achieved through learning the language and seeing the people through their eyes, not your eyes. I came to Asia and I saw everything from the eyes of a Westerner. And yes. I changed a lot. And actually now when I go back home, I see my home through the eyes of someone who lived in Asia for a very long time. So when, for example, when I go and eat, I sometimes look for the chopsticks when I'm at home. <laughs> Where are the chopsticks? And then I realize, no one uses chopsticks in, in, in Romania. Um, so it, 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 there, there's a lot of acceptance. And I learned through the years that there's no point in judging people for what they are or who they are, because they have a history of hundreds of, hundreds of years, thousands of years behind. And who am I to come and, you know, uh, make a value judgment on, on their culture, on who they are. And Mihna, has the, as you learned the language, as you started to interact differently and to see them differently, has the things changed for you? Has their attitude changed towards you? Personally, I think I became more tolerant. When I arrived in Asia, I was very critical of everything. I was very critical of, of the things that I saw, the things that I read. And throughout the years, I became more tolerant. And I think 
natives, the native of a country really appreciate and enjoy when you try to communicate with them in their own language. So I do notice a difference that when, especially when I was in China, now my Chinese is, is nowhere near conversational level. So I cannot have a proper conversation with, with the Chinese person in Chinese. But in Thailand, I was able to communicate with, with the locals. And I noticed like the moment you start speaking their language, they are more open and they want to listen to what you have to say, as opposed to just speaking English and expecting them to understand what you have to say. So I think it goes two ways. I became more, I became slightly different. Actually, some of my friends and family tell me that you actually changed a lot, but you have not noticed. And I also think that the way you interact with the locals is very, it depends a lot on the kind of language you use. I understand, I see. So uh, you become different, you become more tolerant, and yet you can bring us all this wisdom and share to us through your YouTube channel, that's Up Life, and your Facebook page, that's a Positive Psychology Journey. The, actually, your life, your story, it's a journey, as you, as you mentioned, uh, a journey of discovery. And uh, now you're willing and you're sharing with us, which is wonderful. It's a wonderful gift. And I hope, as I appreciate, many people will appreciate the chance of listening to you, the chance of seeing your videos. And uh, then I think we're going to continue our conversation with many other episodes. If uh, the time and uh, everything. Sure, that, that, that would be great to have this this bridge of communication between uh, Beijing and Montreal. And regarding my, my YouTube channels, mostly, you know, it is a journey which I share my own passions, my own trials, my own, you know, little hobbies. And I realized that it is important to, if you have something to share, I think it is important to share it because in that way you can find people that are like-minded and you can make new connections and you can learn from other people too. And if, you know, I don't claim to be an expert in anything. If others have anything to learn from me, then I'm more than happy to, to share what I have to share. So, but I also think that your story and Tai Chi International and the things that you're doing in, in Canada are, are amazing. And I hope that in future episodes, we should um, we should approach sure. the topic from from your point of view too. For sure, we will. I will be happy to bring this up and uh, share it through our conversation. Uh, thank you very much, Mikna. Thank you for appreciation. Thank you for your time. And uh, as I said, we will continue. Sure. Thank you so much. And I really hope that both our audiences can take a message of, you know, of wellness from us. I think if, if there's anything to take from this conversation is that sports movement is important and that if you're a cross-cultural person, accepting the other is, is as important as you wanting to be accepted by, by others. The wisdom of tolerance. Thank you. Sure. All right. Until next time, take care.